You know that feeling when you get a freaking banger shot and you're super stoked to share it with everyone? It looks great on your editor and then you upload it to Instagram and it looks like complete dog shit. It's so frustrating. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how I edit and export my shots to get the best quality possible on Instagram and YouTube. Step one is coffee. Hey, does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? I just made a fresh pot of coffee. Does anybody want coffee? All right, so first off, I'm gonna open up Final Cut, which is the software that I edit on. Some people prefer Premiere, but in general, I just prefer using softwares that don't crash every 15 minutes or so. Okay, that's a joke. For all my friends that edit on Premiere, I know it's only like every 20 minutes or so. If you're interested in learning what settings I actually shoot on, go ahead and check out this video. Actually, I think it'll be right here. Go ahead and check out this video um, where I go over like the exact shoot settings I shoot on for a bunch of different situations. So the shot that I'm gonna be editing in this video is a shot that I took in Mexico last year. Something that's super helpful for Final Cut is actually leaving files in place um, on your hard drives or wherever you're storing them. Um, that way it doesn't take up a ton of space on your library. So I'm gonna import that. Um, and then I am going to create a project. So file, new project, and the settings you're gonna to wanna to use on Final Cut is just vertical, and it'll automatically change your settings to vertical, but make sure, if you want it to display best, go 1080 by 1920. And always with FPV, if you're shooting 30 or 60 frames per second, make sure your frame rate is at 30 frames per second. A lot of people get screwed over with FPV by using 24 frames per second, and they get this really jumpy stuff. Make sure you're shooting in 29.97 frames per second or 30. So go ahead and create that project, and then pull your clip down into the timeline. Okay, and then next up is I'm just going to fit the shot because when you real steady clips, you have to shoot them on horizontal. So I'm gonna put that, move it, transform it up here so it fits the frame. But if the clip is shot in horizontal, just crop in. And then, yeah, so basically this shot was a shot that I took down in Mexico. Um, a few times a year, I host big groups of creators. Um, we call them workshops and we basically just have like between seven and 10 creators come out from all over the place. And we spend a week adventuring, shooting, networking with everyone. And I kind of just teach you guys everything that I know about making a living as a content creator. And yeah, so we just rent this big house and uh, yeah, have a freaking blast for a week. Um, if you guys are interested in joining those trips, there's a link down below to join the wait list. And we also have a Joshua trip that's available right now. So anyways, getting into the shot. Here's kind of what it was. Um, these shots are kind of like my bread and butter when it comes to commercial work. I get hired by tons of hotels and villas um, and even golf course clubs to just kind of come and just fly through their whole property. I really like getting subjects involved because it just like makes the scene a lot more dynamic. Um, so yeah, this is like the whole workshop squad just kind of placed in different uh, locations around the place. So here's the basic flow of the shot. Um, obviously I do not want when I'm flying back, so I'm gonna get my in and out points. Quick little final cut hack that makes it super easy is to just remember that I is in and O is out. So I'm just gonna hit out, boom, and delete the first part. This is the shot. All right, so there's certain parts of this video that I wanna speed up. Um, and then slow down in others. Um, most of this first part has a bunch of action going on, so I don't really want to skip any of that. But from the time it takes for me to get to here to here is a little slow for me. So what I'm gonna do is select all of that by pressing I for in, O for out, and then I'm gonna hit Shift N, and that means basically like shift normal speed. Um, and then I'm probably gonna go like two times speed on that one. Okay, yeah, that's a little fast, so I'm gonna go back to 4X, and that's kinda probably like some good middle ground. Cool, so I like that. I'm going to feather that a bunch, so if you just drag these little things, it kinda feathers your speed ramps quite a bit. And when you add speed ups like that, you really wanna add some motion blur as well, because 
For example, if the drone was actually flying that fast, there'd be a lot of motion blur in the clip. Um, so what I like to do is just add an effect that basically just adds motion blur. And this is actually a great time to introduce the sponsor of this video, which is Motion Array. These videos would not be possible without my sponsors, so huge shout out to Motion Array, which is basically a massive library of presets, LUTs, effects, sound effects, and a ton more but a little bit more on them later and throughout the video. Motion Ray actually has um, a super nice motion blur effect. So right here, motion blur FX. I've already downloaded it. Um, there's instructions on how to download it and everything when you actually download the preset, but I'm gonna take that and apply it to our footage. So basically it is a title effect. So I'm gonna come into titles, find motion blur, and you just place it over the, the points in your video that you want to add that motion blur. So I'm just gonna place it here because the rest of the video is actually pretty solid. Boom, so I'm pretty happy with that. I could spend a lot more time kind of feathering the just like timing of the clip and everything, um, but at least for now, I'm a fan of that. And next up, I like to add sound effects. Sometimes I do add music, like for example, this video, I added a like super Mexican, like fun sounding song. Uh, but for this video and most of my FPV videos, I just like to sound design them. And what that does is it just really immerses the viewer in what's going on. Of course, you can add some random trending reel or something, but oh, even if I do add a song or something, I usually like to sound design it just to give it that extra dimension. And as far as sound effects, I'm actually gonna be getting them from Motion Array as well. So Motion Array has a massive library of songs and sound effects. It's not quite as big of a library as something like Artlist, for example, but it does have a really nice selection. For this shot, I am going to grab some whooshes because what is a good FPV video without some whooshes? I'm also gonna grab some nature sound effects. So some outdoorsy stuff. Here we go, summer beach waves. That's gonna be helpful. Cool, so now I have a ton of different sound effects to use. So the first thing that I like to do is add the ambiance first. Um, honestly, the one effect that I actually really like from Final Cuts library is if you go to sound effects go to wind wind number seven is kind of banging so i'm going to start the clip off with just a little bit of light wind because we were by the ocean so i'm assuming that's kind of how it would be i'm also going to find a creaking door sound effect um, but i'm going to slowly feather the wind away as we get into the actual house so by about here you wouldn't really be hearing any wind so i'm going to go in all the way through the whole house until we come out. And I'm gonna go out, and I'm just gonna lower this one section. So we have something kind of like this, feather it in. Now we're inside. And then when we come back outside, there it goes, it picks up again. It's a little loud, so I'm gonna keep it down. And then once we get into the backyard, um, I'm actually gonna add some jungle ambiance that I got from Motion Array. So again, I'm gonna feather that in as the drone is getting outside. Keeping the wind down below, it's just much quieter. And it was super windy when I was shooting this, um, so you can kind of see the drone stutter a little bit. Um, but then coming down, boom, I'll add the splash later, but now is the time where I can kind of fade this away. So I'm actually just gonna go to here, fade this away and start adding ocean sounds because I'm getting closer to the ocean. So I got Rhode Island waves. This one sounds like the ocean is a little bit further away. So that's why I'm going with it. But it's super loud. So I'm gonna to wanna to bring that down a ton. Ocean, probably be able to hear it from like here. So I'll feather that in gets close to the ocean and immediately starts getting further away from the ocean. That's like the furthest away point from the ocean there. So I'm gonna take this down, feather it in, and honestly, a lot of the stuff now is just kind of playing with levels, making sure everything's good, um, and yeah, just messing with things and watching it over and over and over again, and just kind of messing with the levels. Okay, so after I'm done with the base layer of ambiance, now I'm gonna get into sound effects. So the first one is gonna be the door open. This is just one that I got from Motion Array. So boom, that's like the second that he opens the door. So I'm gonna add this in right there. I'm gonna make it pretty quiet just because it is far away. And then it's 
time for the whooshes. So I got like tons of whooshes here. So this is a nice long and slow one that I'm gonna use for this front door, like going through the front door. I'm actually gonna slow this down a little bit, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is actually add a low pass filter because it's not this noticeable of a whoosh. So I just want it to be kind of like in the background. See how that's like a little much? And I think it's actually too slow. So I'm gonna come here, video effects, and I'm just going to add a low pass. That's much better and I'm actually gonna lower it even more. So now I'm just gonna go through sound design this whole clip and I'll talk to you when I'm done. Okay, so we're pretty much all sound designed up. Now I'm just gonna add a little fade at the end right here, just to kind of end things. And then next up is actually color corrections. Now I use Color Finale for all my color corrections, um, but Final Cut's built-in color correcting tool is actually super solid. Before I mess with exposure, I'm actually gonna add a LUT, which is basically just a preset color profile that you add to your footage. And again, Motion Array is a great place to get LUTs from. So I'm gonna take a frame that kind of represents the whole shot pretty well. Um, I think like right around here, I have like most of the colors that are in the shot right here. So I'm going to apply this LUT with Color Finale, but if you don't have Color Finale, there's a lot of free plugins that you can apply LUTs with, um, like LUT Utility. So I'm gonna come in here, Color Finale Pro, and just add this LUT in. I downloaded this pack from Motion Ray called Pro Film LUTs, and a lot of them look super, super nice. Um, there's a lot of different looks you can get, um, and these are some LUTs that I also have preset on here. This LUT here, which is just Pro Film LUT 2, I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And you can kind of toggle at least with, um, at least with color finale, you can toggle what it looks like with and without. And it kind of just like brings a little bit more contrast. And I really, really like that look. So I'm going to go like that. And sometimes I'll mess with the colors as well in color finale. Like for example, obviously color finale is not required for this, but if I wanted to make the blues a little bit more purple or more like orange and teal Sam Coldery, I could always do that. So uh, I'm going to delete that for now, but I really like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just mess with the colors in the Final Cut Editor. Or not the colors, I'm gonna mess with the exposure. So coming into the exposure here, um, this whole clip has a lot of, like the exposure is actually pretty solid. Um, I would like to bring a few spots down, like for example, right here. I'd like to bring the exposure down a tiny little bit um, so you can just, you know, and it applies to the whole clip, but you can kind of just go down even just a slight bit and that looks good. I also usually like to raise my midtones a little bit if they're a little bit too dark. And honestly, I'm pretty like minimal as far as color correcting goes. A lot of people go super, super heavy. All right, so the last thing that I do with videos like this is add titles in. Um, for example, if I'm shooting for a resort or a golf club or something, you wanna have like an intro that basically says like, this is this place. Yeah, so the name of this place was Casa Kulkin, but honestly, a much better name for it would be like dope house on the beach that makes you feel like Pablo Escobar. <laughs> um, so I'd wanna just add that in the beginning. And again, Motion Ray has a ton of preset titles that are really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to titles, which is where I downloaded this title pack. This title pack is called Clean Titles. That one is pretty nice to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just overlay that here in the beginning. Um, I actually don't really like the red line, so I'm gonna change the color on that. A lot of these Motion Array templates are completely transformable, so if you don't like something about it, you can always just change it. Um, so I'm gonna make that black, and then the titles itself, they're formatted for horizontal, so I'm just going to text one size, boom. Text two size, boom. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust the size of this, just gonna shrink it a little bit just because it looks too big for my liking. Cool. So right there, that is a pretty cool title. Um, like I said, there's tons and tons on Motion Ray, so just check it out and find one that you like. And after those titles are in, we're pretty much ready to export. So as far as export settings, what I would do is I would just go File, 
share, export file, and just make sure it's in the highest quality. So a lot of times it says faster in code, just go better quality, make sure you're in 1080, 1920. Format computer, next, and go ahead and save it. Now quickly I wanna cover if I wanted this clip to be horizontal. Um, I actually shot it in vertical, so I have a vertical GoPro mount. Um, if you're interested in checking out that vertical GoPro mount, I'll link it down in the description. But if I was doing a horizontal project, I do file new project. These are the settings that I typically use, um, is just hit 4K and then keep it at this standard right here. So I'll just go ahead and go there and then file, share, and the same thing. Just make sure you're in the highest quality possible and then export. All right, so after all of our hard work, here is the final result. So that's it for this video. Like I said, if you're interested in learning all the settings that I use to shoot FPV shots, go ahead and check out this video. And again, I just wanna thank Motion Array for sponsoring this video. They have a ton of stuff and I only covered like a really small fraction of what they have. They basically have every asset you need to make your video look professional from LUTs to sound effects to music to titles and a ton more. The best part is the license covers absolutely everything from commercials to social media to YouTube to whatever it may be. If you wanna check them out, hit the link down below. And thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.